Hey, what's up everyone? Chip Walters here to uh, go over a quick tutorial. Uh, Mr. Vocek uh, created this really cool weapon design uh, using MOE. Uh, I saw it online and I downloaded it to take a look at it and it turns out that the actual grip was kind of conflated uh, and it was built out of these polygons. You can kind of see it there. It wasn't really built out of nerves and so I thought, well, it might be a good test to go ahead and, and see if I couldn't rebuild the grip uh, in MOE, uh, it's kind of a nice test of the skills. So here I am pulling the grip apart to see what parts we have that we want to want to create. Now I'm going to grab this little section. I'm playing this back super fast because it is a little bit long. So there you go. Uh, so what I'm doing now is I just create. I'm creating this little section, uh, this set of curves that are, it's a section. And what it's going to do is uh, I'll use that in the loft command to build kind of a basic body uh, uh, of this object. So here we are. Uh, uh, what I'm going to do now is take the uh, take take his handle and rotate it up 335 degrees, and then I'm going to set up uh, set it up so that I can actually start to uh, create these uh, these curves and to be lofted. So here I am. I'm basically scaling in one dimension. I don't need to scale them both because it looks like they're all the same. Although I think I did miss one little detail on this, which we'll talk about a little later. But uh, as you see, I'm just I'm just creating copies of the curve. You can do that a couple of different ways. You can control, click, and drag, or you can uh, copy and paste sometimes, and I'll do a, uh, um, use the move command. So sometimes, I'll, depending on what I'm doing, I'll use one of those two different techniques. Uh, now, as I'm moving forward through this, I'm going to basically now uh, make make the shape and see if I can't see if it's going to if it's going to fit. So as I'm looking at it and comparing it, uh, I'm realizing I need to tweak it a little bit. So I'll add some more uh, loft sections. And typically, I'll keep playing around with this. I'm not always going to get it right the first time. So uh, uh, I've decided now that I'm going to go ahead and try and include this top piece. Earlier, I was just going to boolean it on, but I think I'll, I'll just go ahead and include it. So again, uh, I keep uh, all the show points on these. One, it makes them easy to identify. Number two, uh, it also allows me to manipulate them if I have to later on. Like right now, I'm using to pull these down. As I pull them down, of course, because I've created a loft using the settings loose, I'm able to, as I pull these around, I'm able to actually manipulate manipulate the surface that's being generated, or the solid that's being generated by the loft. So that's one of the nice things there. You can see here, I'm kind of getting getting kind of close to what I want. Uh, uh, up here, I'm going to have to tweak that, that top nose area. So uh, loft is a pretty good... Uh, uh, way of building a lot of the different objects that you may find. Um, uh, it creates a pretty good smooth surface, which sometimes is easy to fill it. Uh, in this case, it wasn't quite the same. Okay, so now I've imported the actual gun again to see exactly uh, what it looks like complete as a, before I pulled it apart. So now I'm going to actually figure out how I'm going to cut out the pieces. So these are going to be my my curves I'm creating to do Boolean differences. And I'm going to color them red and I'll use them, uh, uh, I'll, I'll, basically I'll sketch them out using the polyline tool, uh, and then I'll go in and I'll add curve points and I'll delete the corner points. And most times here what I'm trying to do is actually create curves that have literally no corner points that are going to be part of the actual object. I'm thinking that might help fill up things a little bit, but I'm not sure that that actually did case in this case. This is kind of interesting. I noticed, you may have noticed that you're, I just started a point from an existing point, and the reason for that is so I didn't start at the zero uh, in the middle of the plane. So by starting from a, an existing point that I already have, I've already moved out to the side, I can make sure that this curve that I'm working on is always in front of the side view. Uh, so that's an important, uh, kind of important thing. Now I'm going to start filleting uh, some of these parts, and again, once I fill them, I'll delete the corner points. So, uh, as you see, when I fill it, I'm gonna, uh, I'm not gonna use a, uh, a circular fillet. I'm gonna use a G2, G2 blend fillet, and that's gonna give me the outside, the outside points are gonna be corner points. So once I do a G2 fillet, I'll delete those outside points. I may have to tweak a little bit uh, my existing curves once I do that, but it's a, it's a good way of of getting a, a real smooth. A smooth boolean cut uh, without any sharp edges and sometimes sharp edges create problems as we all know filleting things so here I am I'm going to take this up so I realize that I, I, I cut I didn't uh, align it so I'll move that exactly as much as I need to here I'll align it perfectly with one of the document with one of the existing uh, uh, 
loft shapes. Now that I've got that done, I can go ahead and uh, I'll have to stitch some things together. So I see that I need a little piece up here off the top. I'm going to need to create this uh, also. And I notice that I'm making a curve just a little bit. I think I'm bullying all these together so I can create these curves and just basically select them all and hit the union button. And now I've got them all together. Delete those extra points. Add those same G2 radiuses and delete the points on them so that I've got all all soft points, no hard points. Uh, and now I've done a Boolean subtraction on that surface. And you see there's my object. And so this is an object. It's got a little weird curve on the on the front front right. So I basically split it in half and then and then uh, uh, union Boolean union it again to get rid of that curve. I'm not sure where that curve came from. And so I just went ahead and, uh, like I said, split it in half and then uh, Boolean unioned it. So now I've rotated it into place and now I need to start adding some of these other parts. So I'll take one of my existing cross-section lofts, shrink it down a little bit, move it around. I'm going to Boolean these, uh, the square off of this. Oops, got to flatten them, get them, get them square. Now I've got it Booleaned. And now this is just a very simple matter here of Again, using the loft tool here, we're going to put two or three of these together. And notice that as I'm moving around, I can't get what I want, so I know I need to add two more or one more. So now I've got it. You can see as I'm pulling it around, I need to look at I'm actually looking at it to see if I can get it, make sure I can get it lined up perfectly, which I did. So uh, now um, I'm going to subtract out the part that we don't need, and I've got one of the sections done. So I'm going to laboriously go through uh, building uh, these other sections uh, the same way. Um, again, you'll see I've got this little this little uh, object. I'm, I'm also I might mention I'm using colors a lot to help me because when I'm doing the lofting, I can just select from the styles panel. I can just select the oranges in this case, and it'll it'll allow me to, to loft them all, or I can just I can right click them, but I can just click on the orange selector and it'll allow me to select them. And now I'm, you know, of course, I'm just dragging them. I usually com command, hold that under the command key when I'm dragging them around so it's not trying to snap to anything. That's important. Uh, so I've got what I think is, looks pretty good here. Uh, I'm going to have to put a little divot on the, uh, uh, on the, the middle hump there. And I'm going to show you how to do that here in a second. Uh, what I'll do is I'll take a line and I'll use the curve project to project that line onto that subject. Now I've got that and I'm going to go in and draw a quick little bullet shaped uh, uh, curve and I'll sweep it and once I've sweeped it uh, it wasn't quite right the first time so I rotated it around 90 degrees and then sweeped it and then you know the sweep is a live sweep so when I rotated my originating shape it went in exactly the way I wanted it so that worked out pretty good. Um, again very simply I'm just going to go ahead and use kind of the same curve to build these same these same surface up uh, very quickly um, uh, and once I get done I'll bully out the part that I don't want so you can see I'm pr pretty quickly building this whole shape out exactly the way we want to um, so now I did basically selected that outside shape I did an offset I did a an offset offset so I just offset the surface a little bit and once I've got that surface offset uh, I want to make sure I get the right size there we go. Let's take a look at it carefully. Make sure I get that offset the right thickness. So that's just a surface now. And before I do anything, while it's a surface, before I've actually created a shape or a solid out of it, I'm going to trace around this grip area and I'm going to cut that. I'm going to cut it out. So again, uh, once again, I'm going to try and build this in a way that doesn't have any corner points. It's got all soft points. And so as I do this, uh, you see that. Uh, 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 I'm going to radius different points in different ways, and as I do that, it actually screws up with the uh, uh, the main points as well, so I have to go back and tweak those. So it takes a little bit more time. I'm not sure it's worth it. In fact, if somebody knows if it is better to do this or not, let me know. I don't know if the corner points are going to create problems, any more problems. In fact, you know, this was a kind of a hard shape to fill it. Uh, as you will see later on. So okay, so now I've gone ahead and I've, I've basically done a, a very quick um, uh, uh, shell, but I realized the shell didn't work. It didn't create a, uh, uh, a solid. So here I divided, I cut it in half, thought maybe I'll just uh, go ahead and stitch it together with the network. Network doesn't doesn't work. Uh, I'm trying to make this a solid. So it's just whatever's going on, it's not working. So 
I've gone back to the original. Instead of going in uh, 0.5, I'm going in 0.4, and now I do have a solid. So I'll take that inside shape, and I'll go another 0.1. So I eventually do get my 0.5, and I boolean those two shapes together, and so it works fine. So that was kind of an interesting little hack. Uh, here's the trigger. Again, this is a pretty traditional way of doing things. Um, we'll just create a loft, you know, a couple loft shapes, put it together. Uh, I, I did the loft, and I realized I want a little tighter edges on the end. So what I did is I just kind of <clears throat> uh, added some more loft seconds, zoom in, just kind of did a command or yeah, control uh, drag to copy those particular loft curves. And set this up. Now I'll cut out the, the whole area for it and delete my corner points. Add the soft points, delete the corner points, add radiuses in each one of the corners. Each one's different, so I had to go through one at a time and get them. And again, I deleted the corner points on these as well. Uh, and now I'm going to go ahead and boolean out the rest of this thing. And there's our. There's, so that's pretty much our gun. Now, so our next challenge is going to be to take this, and uh, oh, we got to put the I forgot, we got to put the, the the gripper on right there. That's the gripper thing. So we have we have that already done, but we don't have the holes. And the holes, <coughs> excuse me, the holes actually kind of bump out a little bit. So I'm going to I'm going to basically show you how to hear how I how I solve that particular problem. I create these circles. And I'm going to show the points, and I'm going to actually rebuild that, that second surface there. Delete some of the soft points, and you can see that that's the, you know, the, the, the main circle is where the hole is going to be for the bolt. The second circle is for the uh, uh, is for the, where the body kind of is going to be filleted into. So you can kind of see how that works. Okay. So I'm going to move these out and try to create a loft shape. And I realize once I do that, it's just it's too straight. I need to have something a little a little more of a, a kind of bulbous. So I've created an inset shape, and now I'll loft these three together, and I will get what I'm looking for there. Good. Okay. And so now now what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically take this and I'm going to uh, separate all of this. So I only have just I cut it in half, actually separate it, so I only have just uh, the uh, that surface. And now I'm going to basically cut a hole in that surface, but I'm going to cut the hole much bigger. As you can see, that's what I'm doing right here. I'm cutting the hole bigger, and then I'm going to blend between these two, which works. And then I hook it all back together and uh, create a solid out of it, but it doesn't work. Why is that? Oh, because there's a there's an actual plane on the back side of that little yellow bullet area right there. So I gotta go back in there, delete those. Now I can group them all together and then I can mirror it and group it all together and now I have a solid. So there's my solid handle with my little areas. Okay, so now I'm gonna use from my object library uh, one of my little widgets. You can find it. There's I have a whole tutorial on this as well. So uh, I'm just gonna put a little hex widget in there, resize it, make sure that's uh, exactly where I want it, and uh, duplicate it to here. Then I'm going to have to mirror it to the other side. And then once I've got those done, I select the handle, I boolean different, select the subtract, select the subtract uh, style. It kills them, and uh, we got the little. I uh, put that in there. So now I'm going to try and start trying to fill up this, and you'll see that there's just all kinds of trouble trying to fill up this thing. So I pretty much have decided once I you know, once I started playing around with this that it just flat out. <laughs> wouldn't fill it, even though I thought I was being careful about how I built my my solids. It's just, you know, sometimes things just don't fill it. Now, uh, so what I decided to do is I'm going to go ahead and just export these as step files, take them into, uh, make sure I set my units to millimeters, by the way, before you do that. Export step files, bring them into Onshape, open them up in Onshape, and uh, Let's hide those planes. So let's take a look at it. So now in on shape, I can kind of do some filleting. It's kind of have to play with a little bit, but just make sure I get the right number set up and get the filleting I, I like. And then once I'm done, I export it back in step uh, out of on shape and import it. And there it is. So it's perfectly filleted. So that's how I'm doing that nowadays. 
again, do the same thing with the, uh, with the, the this handle. If it's white, it comes in black, so you got to reset the color, uh, which is just selecting everything and hitting right click and assigning a new material or a new color for it. Uh, again, we'll go in here and we'll start playing with some of the different uh, radiuses. Uh, and sometimes you find that you can't get exactly the fillet you want, uh, and you have to let uh, you have to work with this tangent propagation feature in Onshape to get it to work. Sometimes you turn it off, sometimes you turn it on. I'm not sure exactly, forgot exactly why wh why and when, but uh, once we get this all done, uh, you know, we're good. In this case, I've moved this fillet to the very top, thinking that might help make that go faster in terms of uh, resequencing the operations, but it turns out it wasn't a big deal. So now I export this, bring it back into MOE, and uh, and Bob's your uncle as far as uh, uh, the whole uh, the whole grip is pretty much done after I fill up the uh, little handle there. So that's pretty much uh, the story. I just basically took it from there, pasted it into the original one, deleted the original, put it in the original one, and uh, and there you have it. So hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.